The only other thing I want to say, uh, re forbidden sources, is that um, I think there's a tendency of some people uh, on the right, on or certain t certain areas of the right, let's say, to want to characterize Bolshevism as a kind of exclusively Jewish movement, or as a as and I d my assessment is that uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, and that is that the, I mean, we, we, we're going to talk about people like Jacob Schiff and international finance and so on in, in a moment, but um, it really looking at everything and reading between the lines and so on, it, it really seems like their man was Trotsky and not, and like it seemed like their agent, if you want, in this circle was very much uh, Trotsky and his friends, uh, even though Lenin, ever the pragmatist, you know, may have taken money or may have taken like, you know, uh, train tickets or whatever at various different times at a convenience. Um, it seems like the true kind of ideological support from outside of Russia was coming for the kind of uh, the Trotsky variant. Um, also, in the kind of writings that I, you know, the kind of on the ground descriptions and things, there, there was also a slight split within the kind of characters around so like Trotsky and some of his friends were seen as, um, and again, you can tell me if you disagree with these characterizations, but kind of Trotsky and his friends were seen as being more kind of like root, rootless cosmopolitan types. Whereas, of course, um, couldn't really say that about Stalin and some of the other du dudes doing the bank jobs, you know. So there was a kind oh, no, of I, a strange split. I think between... that's, a, that's a fair thing. That also corresponds into the political mentality, because, of course, I mentioned the fact that Lenin was prepared to reject the um, decisively, you know, Russian socialism of the Narodniks in favor of the, the more international socialism of German Marxism. But again, he would himself um, move away from this consistently throughout his career. And you can say, I think Stalin is a much closer approximation of what would happen under Lenin had Lenin survived longer than mm -hmm. Trotsky. Trotsky who was you know, by far the um, the idealist and the internationalist, mm -hmm. you know, up yeah. to my, my association with Trotsky, it isn't, you know, some Russian, it is, you know, the, the quintessential continental um, intellectual, you know, in the, the coffee houses of Vienna um, mm -hmm. conspiring. It's not the, um, the, the quintessential, you know, Russian yeah. revolutionary. So, I mean, we, we'll, I mean, I don't want to jump ahead too much, but just to try to clear up this question, because I, I know a lot of people uh, in the chat, you know, want to hear about this specific question. My my key finding from reading uh, said sources was that um, really, do, do you remember we were saying the Mensheviks were almost like a kind of overwhelmingly Jewish or they had like a very high percentage uh, of their of their membership and leadership um, compared to the population as a whole? Yeah. I think like, you know, the population of Russia was some, something like 2% Jewish uh, and the the makeup of the Mensheviks, you know, I mean, it was something ridiculous, like over 20% or something. Um, yeah. the, the, the way it is kind of framed is that basically after the Bolsheviks got into power, a lot of them switched sides then. <laughs> um, a, bit, a bit like later on how, you know, a load of neoconservatives like, su suddenly switched sides as well. Um, so that, that's really where that, a lot of those associations come from. It is that once the actual power structure was formalized, those same people then had to like decide what they wanted to do and basically get like aligned with power to get jobs. And exactly, and I think so, this is this yeah. is something we can elaborate on when we get to the the, the era past the um, the July days of nineteen seventeen. But yeah, when it comes to the you know original Bolsheviks, I mean, the, probably the most um, hardline Bolsheviks were um, Zinoviev. Um, uh, Stalin and um, and and Lenin. I, I think you know they are again obsessed with um, factionalism. So um, you know when Lenin is in his in period of exile, you know he's getting into this um, major feud with um, Bogdanov, who was an, who was another Bolshevik. And um, interestingly enough, as as we mentioned in the last stream, you know, the Okhrana were interested in um, infiltrating these various organizations and subverting them. Well, one of the members of the Bolshevik party will actually rise to um, one of the seven members of the Central Committee of the Bolshevik party will be one Melanovsky, who was actually an agent of the Okhrana and would only be um, exposed after his um, wife outed him, in, uh, sorry, his mistress outed him in, in 1914. But yes, this um, this playing on the factionalism and trying to isolate Lenin, that was, you know, one of the core 
considerations of the Okhrana. And as you mentioned, you know, many of the Jews were at this time Mensheviks. And the Mensheviks were always sort of um, vying for control of the party. And ultimately, by 1912, the differences between the two factions have become so great. And through the Prague conference, basically all of the um, uh, Mensheviks were, you know, liquidated to use um, Stalin's terminology. 